With your source file selected, any cropping and resizing already completed, and any video filters needed already selected, you're ready to move on to your codec or encoding settings. MPEG-4 Advanced Video Coding, or AVC, is a compressed video format designed to increase quality over older formats like MPEG-2 while also decreasing file size. You may also see it referred to as simply MPEG-4 video, although this isn't recommended since there is another older MPEG-4 video format which is very different. To avoid confusion, I'll actually be referring to it by the name that Handbrake does, which is H.264. That's simply another name by another organization for the same standard. This is Handbrake's default video format. Look at the video codec option and make sure H.264 is selected. There are two different strategies which can be used for encoding video, bitrate based or quality based. Bitrate based encoding is designed to produce predictable file sizes. The size of a video file created using this strategy can be calculated by multiplying the playing time of the video by the bitrate. Quality based encoding, on the other hand, attempts to maintain identical quality for every frame using whatever bitrate is necessary. Neither strategy is inherently better than the other. It depends on your needs for a particular encoding job. If you want to produce a file of a specific size, like exactly 700 megabytes for a CD or exactly 2 gigabytes for a flash drive, bit rating based encoding is the way to go. If your goal is to ensure consistent quality throughout your video and size isn't a consideration, quality based encoding makes more sense most of the time. Handbrake offers two options for bit rate based encoding. Target size and average bitrate. Selecting average bitrate allows you to directly set the bitrate but doesn't guarantee the size of your output file which will also vary depending on the size of any audio and subtitles. Selecting target size allows you to specify what size the final output file will be but will lower or raise the bitrate of your video depending on the size of the audio and subtitle streams included. For example, if you need a 1 gigabyte file, you could put in 1 thousand megabytes. In order to make optimal decisions on how to distribute bits between frames in either target size or bitrate mode, the encoder must have information about each and every frame in the video. This requires that it examine the video from beginning to end first and then make a second pass to actually encode it. This is called two-pass encoding. Although encoding can also be done in a single pass using either option, it will almost always result in lower quality since the encoder must make many assumptions about future frames. Checking the two-pass encoder box enables this first analysis pass. Since not all the calculations in a regular encoding pass are necessary for the analysis pass, turbo first pass should also be checked. This will make the first pass significantly faster than the second. If you want to reach a precise target size, you also need to realize there are two different ways to calculate size, metric and binary. Although they appear to be the same at first glance, there are important differences which can cause big headaches when you're trying to figure out if a file will fit on a particular storage device. Using the metric system, one kilobyte is 1,000 bytes, one megabyte is 1,000 kilobytes, and one gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes. Because computers are binary devices and not metric ones, they use slightly different calculations. Instead of multiples of 10, they use multiples of 2. If you look at the size of a file, folder, or drive in Windows, 1 kilobyte is actually 1024 bytes, 1 megabyte is 1024 kilobytes, and 1 gigabyte is 1024 megabytes. Anytime you look at marketing related numbers, including the size of hard drives, DVDs, flash drives, and almost any other storage media, you should assume the metric system is being used simply because it makes them look bigger. That means a target size of 1000 megabytes in Handbrake will produce a file which actually won't fit on a 1 gigabyte flash drive. The easiest way to account for this is simple estimation. Reducing the metric figures by 10% is generally close enough. So if you're trying to fit a file on a 1 gigabyte flash drive, set a target size of 900 megabytes in Handbrake. The constant quality option in Handbrake uses a quality based encoding strategy. The quality depends on a number called the rate factor which can be set using a slider. A lower rate factor results in higher quality. Notice the numbers go down as I go to the right. 
A rate factor of zero gives you a lossless encode, meaning the picture, when played back, will be identical to the original in every way. It also tends to produce files which are too big to be useful for the vast majority of applications. Raising the rate factor will lower the quality, but also lower your file size. A rate factor somewhere between 16 and 18 will usually be visually lossless. The encoded video may not be identical to the original to a computer, but to the human eye it looks like it is. The exact rate factor required to encode visually lossless video depends on the content of the video, the playback equipment, and of course the human watching it. Keep in mind that the size of your output file using constant quality mode is unpredictable. Hitting an exact target size, or even getting close to a target size, may require hours or even days of trial and error. Also keep in mind that every device has a maximum bitrate it supports. Exceed that bitrate and the result may not play back correctly or at all on some devices. Once you've selected an output size, bitrate, or quality for your video, there are a few more encoding options you should consider. These settings can be found on the Advanced tab. Most of these options will affect encoding speed. Some will affect the size of the file created, and some will make Handbrake's output unplayable on some hardware. Many will do more than one of those things. If you're not sure what features your device supports, you may have to do some testing with different settings. Alternatively, you can stick with fairly safe settings, foregoing some of H.264's advanced capabilities in favor of maximum device compatibility. This will also, in most cases, increase the size of your file or reduce the quality. The first group of options we'll look at is B-frames. H.264 video can contain three different types of frames. I-frames are self-contained. They don't reference any other frames and therefore are the easiest to decode. P-frames are predicted frames. Instead of being complete pictures, they are basically the changes from previous frames. B-frames are bi-directional frames. That means, like P-frames, they only contain information about changes to the picture. But unlike P-frames, they reference both previous and future frames. I-frames require the highest bitrate of the three, followed by P-frames, and then B-frames. Whenever possible, you should use B-frames. They will result in better quality for bitrate-based encoding or smaller files for quality-based encoding. However, not all devices are capable of decoding B-frames. This is particularly common in portable media players and mobile phones. More advanced playback devices, like Blu-ray players, TV set-top boxes, game consoles, and PCs should have no problem with them. Setting this to zero will turn them off completely. Usually it's best to set the number of B-frames to either two or three. This represents the maximum number of consecutive B-frames which will be used, however fewer or even none at times may be used. If your source has a lot of consecutive frames, which are nearly identical, you may benefit from a higher number. This is typically only helpful with animated sources. Just like a particular player may have problems with B-frames in general, there also may be a limit to how many are supported in a row. Adaptive B-frame should always be on. This will avoid using B-frames when it doesn't result in bitrate savings. Unless you are using more than 2 to 3 bitframes, the default setting of fast is best. For higher numbers, optimal may improve file size for quality-based encodes or quality for bitrate-based encodes. It will also increase encoding time. Direct prediction should be set to automatic. This allows the encoder to determine whether it should use either the B-frame being encoded currently or a different frame for certain calculations. It's especially useful for increasing the quality of bitrate based encodes but may also decrease the size of quality based encodes slightly. Never turn this feature off as it will slow the encode while also lowering the quality. The worst of both worlds. Checking the weighted B-frames box may lower the bitrate of fades from one scene to another in the video, but will also cause problems playing back on certain devices. Leave this off. B-frames can't be used to predict other B-frames unless pyramidal B-frames is checked. 
This will typically increase quality for bitrate based encodes or lower file size for quality based encodes, but can cause playback problems on some devices. One of the best ways to reduce the file size or increase quality of H.264 video is using KBAC entropy coding. KBAC is lossless compression, so it won't affect quality. It will, however, slow down encoding and also make the resulting video unplayable on a number of devices. Ironically, many portable devices, which would benefit the most from smaller files, don't support this feature. For most encoding, it's a good idea to leave it on. If you are encoding for a mobile device or with a slower computer, you may want to turn it off. If you are using KBAC, you should also set Trellis to 1, which is also its default value. This will give you a little bit more bitrate savings on top of what you get from KBAC already. Setting it to 2 may result in a slight bitrate savings, but will slow down encoding. Generally, 1 is a better setting. In order to encode a frame, the H.264 encoder must first divide the picture into blocks of pixels. These blocks can vary in size from 16 by 16 all the way down to 4 by 4. Setting analysis to all and checking 8 by 8 DCT will allow the encoder to use the smallest blocks possible on every frame when it improves quality. However, both options will make encoding slower and 8x8 DCT will cause playback problems on some devices. Setting analysis to default and leaving 8x8 DCT unchecked will generally result in a good balance of encoding speed, quality, and device compatibility. Motion estimation settings define how big an area the encoder looks at to find movement for predicting frames. Either hexagon or uneven multi-hexagon should always be used. Hexagon is slightly faster but may produce slightly lower quality. Lower settings than hexagon can lower quality substantially, while settings higher than uneven multi-hexagon will reduce encoding speed with little or no quality improvement. Subpixel motion estimation should be set to either 6 or 7. It allows motion estimation to calculate movement across a distance less than one pixel. A setting of less than 6 is required to enable psychovisual enhancements, while settings higher than 7 are likely to slow down encoding too much for a negligible improvement in quality. Psychovisual rate distortion should be set at maximum, with the slider all the way to the right. This ensures quality decisions will be made based on human vision modeling rather than simple mathematical similarity. Psychovisual trellis is experimental, on the other hand, and best left off by leaving the slider all the way to the left. Like Handbrake's built-in deblocking filter, H.264's deblocking is for hiding artifacts so you don't see the edges of pixel blocks used for encoding. Unlike that filter, it doesn't actually alter the video in any way. Instead, it will perform the necessary calculations and let your playback device use or ignore them as it sees fit. The settings used are beyond the scope of this guide. My advice is simply not to change them if you don't know what you're doing. Check no fast P skip if you're having problems with solid colored areas exhibiting blocking artifacts. Otherwise, leave it off since it slows down encoding. Typically, these solid colored areas will be things like the sky, or a road, or a solid colored wall. No DCT decimate should usually be left unchecked. In fact, almost always. Checking it prevents the encoder from saving space on blocks it doesn't think you'll see, while also increasing encode times. It will produce larger files for quality-based encodes, and most of the time, lower quality for bitrate-based encodes. Once you have all your video encoding options set, the next step will be to move on to the Audio tab to set some options there.